Most people absolutely adore coffee. Luckily, I'm one of them. It's something about the smell of coffee itself that gives you that sense of comfort, clarity, and passion. It's that little secret hat that helps you finish your work, socialize with friends, and enjoy life. But since coffee works its way into becoming our daily routine, I can't help but ask, what effects does it really have on our brain? That's what we'll explore today. Cheers, everyone. Today we'll look at what effects coffee and caffeine has on our brain from a cognition perspective, so memory, focus, mental fatigue, and all this kind of jazz. But also we'll look at the other effects and potential pros and cons caffeine can have on socializing, mood, potentially aiding in longevity, etc, etc. Today's video is a bit more data centric, so you're gonna check out like six or seven studies which are focusing on the effects of caffeine on the brain. If you're interested in more in-depth review of coffee and caffeine on the brain and its effects in general, make sure to check out this article. We've collected a lot of data on vitalsend.com and presented to you in a way that's easily digestible, interesting, and it's gonna definitely increase your knowledge around coffee and caffeine. Now, I wanna preface this video with saying there is a ton of difference between having a 500 calorie latte with a bloat of sugar and trans fats, which is definitely gonna detrimentally affect one's health and glycemic control. There is a difference between that and having a ketogenic or bulletproof coffee where while you're in a fasting, you have some clean, high antioxidant rich coffee and add some butter, ghee, or a little bit of MCT oil versus having a nice shot of espresso, which I absolutely adore if it's not too loaded in sugar, or having a clean coffee like this, which is basically made by hot water going through this high quality coffee beans extracting the goodness and caffeine out. You can still fast while drinking this kind. The most powerful reason that keeps coffee lovers stuck on caffeine is focus. Caffeine improves our alertness, attention, and ability to concentrate. This makes work a lot easier and smoother as it gives you a short-term cognitive boost. It's why many entrepreneurs, digital nomads, busy moms, and students swear by it. But is it healthy for your brain and at what cost does coffee come? Do pros of coffee outweigh the cons? And to answer that question, anything in life comes with certain pros and cons. So I stumbled on the debate that coffee may be negative for you and affect energy and fatigue levels. But here's the thing, looking at a broader picture, if you don't use caffeine at the wrong times, which is at night, or don't ingest too much caffeine, you can get rid of most of the detrimental potential effects. If you are the one in control, you can control how much caffeine and when you ingest it and cycle caffeine and take in some time off of caffeine, you can probably get rid of all the detrimental effects and potentially improve your life because you get that boost in cognition, focus, energy. Now, another positive thing I see with coffee is it stimulates social interaction. You're much more likely to visit a friend for a cup of coffee if you both like coffee. It makes you network, mingle and interact with others, which is good for you. Another thing is it improves productivity and there's no secret to it. It blocks the adenosine receptors, enhancing your focus and masking fatigue. This can translate to more productive work, lengthening your hours and it basically makes work easier. The third thing is it can enhance life quality by improving your mood and taking into account all of these other benefits it has. It can also be the little reward that makes you more regular at going to the gym. Coffee gives you a certain refresh. It's kind of like a setup for work, for working more or working better. It's like when I think of that cup of coffee, I get such like clarity and passion and I can make better decisions overall. It's like that little boost, that little motivation I need to make my work easier and flow better. If you want to see how I cycle caffeine to not get addicted to its effects, stay tuned to the end. Caffeine improves focus and alertness. We've already said this and it's probably the most dominant effect and the reason behind why we all love caffeine. Just by smelling coffee, you can already like vividly picture the cognitive boost that you're potentially gonna get and how good it feels as it is a dopamine booster. A little clarification around how this works. As we go throughout the day, we produce more adenosine which binds to our adenosine receptors in the brain. And this signals fatigue. 
it says, hey, you're tired, go to sleep to replenish and throw off all this adenosine so you can wake up energetic. Now, caffeine, because it has a similar structure to adenosine, binds to these receptors first, which masks fatigue, improving focus and alertness. This allows you to be more productive, work harder and be a bit sharper. Both low and moderate doses of caffeine ingested at 40 mg to 300 mg improved alertness, vigilance, attention and reaction time in humans. Caffeine boosts energy and fights fatigue. As one of the most potent and widely frequently used psychoactive stimulants, caffeine is able to stimulate the central nervous system. Now, besides the adenosine blockage we talked about before, which increases your focus and alertness, caffeine also can increase certain hormones like cortisol and adrenaline, which get your heart racing a bit faster, so you're more like sharp, alert and focused, ready to either work out or perform a cognitively demanding task. However, it is important to say that it works by masking fatigue and not increasing energy on a fundamental level like ketogenic diet does by optimizing your mitochondria, for example. In elite judoist, caffeine ingestion led to a higher anxiety, which is normal as the effect is stimulatory, but also vigor, higher vigor, plus it reduced reaction time. It improved physical performance, exerting an ergogenic effect. It improves mood and well-being. Caffeine is a very well-known potent stimulant of dopamine. And dopamine is that hormone that makes us feel satisfied, motivated and happy. We all want that, right? Now, do not confuse this with a sugary coffee which also gives a boost in dopamine and makes you feel good. Even clean coffee like that with no added trans fats or sugars can significantly affect dopamine levels, but it doesn't increase the dopamine directly, but it actually reduces the reabsorption of dopamine, which improves dopaminergic signaling in the brain, again making you more motivated, happy, feeling rewarded and satisfied. It has been shown that after poor sleep, when dopamine levels are down, caffeine can potentially improve the neurobehavioral aspect of a moody behavior. Besides being used to increase alertness and wakefulness, caffeine may also affect dopamine signaling in the brain, leading to an improved mood. It protects the brain. Caffeine is known to exert neuroprotective effects due to its potent antioxidants. See, as we age, our cognition declines and our brain shrinks. Being able to reduce the oxidative damage that occurs with time can potentially be neuroprotective and improve cognition in the long run. Now, caffeine contains certain bioactive compounds like caffeic and cholinergic acid, which have been shown to exert neuroprotective effects in humans. However, in terms of Parkinson's disease, the research shows a U-shaped curve. This means too little or no caffeine or too much caffeine both detrimentally affected the rates of Parkinson's while having, I believe it was somewhere around two to four cups, was beneficial for neuroprotection. Research shows coffee has components like cholinergic acid that may exert neuroprotective properties, potentially slowing down cognitive decline when consumed in moderate amounts. It enhances cognition and processing speed. Now, for all you coffee lovers out there, you already know that ingesting caffeine makes you more fluent when talking to other people. It increases sports performance, but we're talking about faster and sharper decision making, which also a lot of productive people and CEOs need. See, in life we have complex motor movements and complex cognitive tasks that we need to take care of and caffeine just makes all of this smoother. It reduces reaction time, making us faster, it makes us sharper, elevates our energy and cognition, just fluidly improving all of these processes. At 800 grams of caffeine administrated repeatedly at 200 milligrams in soldiers under suboptimal sleep situations, caffeine improved detection of events, increased correct responses as well as logical reasoning. It improves memory recall. Now if you know anything about learning and memory, you know that they are interconnected. You first need significant amount of attention and focus in order to be able to process certain information. And then once you get that information, memory is all about encoding it into your brain. So memory works by creating new neural pathways and with enough repetition, strengthening those so you can recall them later. 
Caffeine assists this because it improves learning, attention, and focus. It also has been shown in certain animal and human studies to improve spatial memory, which is your how-to memory, so how to exert certain movement or how to do a task, and also short-term memory, so you can recall something that happened five seconds ago. Splitting 30 participants in a decaf and caffeinated group, double-blind treatments show caffeine was effective at improving the speed of encoding new information into working memory. A little bonus tip for my coffee lovers, cycle caffeine. It's known that if you continually ingest coffee, it can cause withdrawal effects and you need to up the dose to get the same benefit. Well, a simple thing you can do instead is what I do, four days of the week when I have more cognitively demanding tasks, I'd ingest caffeinated version. And three days where I don't, I'd ingest decaf version, I still get that socialization, that extended window of work, that reward before my gym, but I don't just get the hit of caffeine and I still enjoy my coffee, but it's decaf. Two rules, don't go further than two or three cups a day because it's gonna detrimentally affect your ability to sleep deep. And another rule is don't have coffee over two or three o'clock because caffeine has half-life of six hours, which means it stays in your system distracting deep sleep, which is the most natural regenerative process helping you grow muscle, lose fat, get better cognition, detox, all of the good stuff. So if you follow this kind of things and cycle caffeine as I do, it's very likely that you'll throw off and reduce all the potential withdrawal, addiction, headaches and all of that. Because now I can easily stay off coffee for two weeks with no headaches trade. Thanks for watching again and I hope I'll check you in the next one. Goodbye.